Hello and welcome to this episode of the Healthy Church Grow Show podcast. And I am delighted to have with me Paul Pavlou, who is a curate with the Church of England. And if you don't know what that is, it's an Anglican dom- denomination based in the United Kingdom. Paul, how are you? I'm well, thank you, Madge. Thank you so much for uh, having me on the podcast today. Fantastic. Well, <laughs> uh, we, we want to talk about um, your vocation now, um, mm-hmm. where you've come from, some of the journey so far, mm-hmm. and some of your observations, really. It's really good to speak to somebody of, I am not um, an Anglican, although, interestingly, I went to an Anglican primary school um, many decades ago, many (laughs) decades ago. Um, But um, yeah, so I don't I don't have that much familiarity. The only other thing I know about the Church of England is that my one of my mentors um, for a very short time while I was at university was the then Reverend Rose Hudson Wilkin, who is now the Bishop of Dover. Mm. So I know a little bit about Anglicanism, but I'm sure you're going to to put me straight (laughs) on a few things today. Oh, I don't know about that. (laughs) (laughs) So Paul, have you ever served, have you always served in ministry or did you do other things outside ministry before? Yeah, no, I am. So I I spent a few, uh, before, before I got into ordained ministry I was a a primary school teacher for uh, a few years and and then in back in North London where uh, where I was living back then and then went on to become a a special needs coordinator but I knew I I felt the call of God to go into ministry before then um, but I didn't pursue it at the time my then associate vicar of the church which I was serving at um, you know, it, actually, it was on the uh, the evening of the day that I got baptized as an adult. I'd wow. sort of, I'd felt um, drawn back into relationship with God as a young adult, probably around twenty years old, and, and got baptized at my dad's church. And um, in the evening, I went to the church that I was part of, and I and I just felt this nudge from the spirits, you know, saying, you know, I I want you to kind of go into ministry so I told my associate vicar and he said quite plainly he said yeah not a matter of if but when oh, and uh and uh, so yeah so I then just thought okay well I'll pursue work you know in the secular world if you like and then over the years kept pushing the door and uh, eventually it felt right uh, so that's a long-winded answer <laughs> to, to, to say that no I haven't always been in ministry I've always served when I've been at church. Um, Doing uh, what? Oh, there was a, a mixture of things growing up, really. Um, out, you know, being part of an alpha team, uh, preaching, doing some kids' work, prayer ministry, um, co-leading at services, being a home group leader. Um, you know, dabbed in a few different things, really. Doing one-off events. Um, yeah, just trying to get hold of whatever I could really to, to learn and, and grow and, and, and so learn. let's put you in good stead um for your journey thus far which we will we'll talk yeah. about more in a minute but um so you are now called a curate mm-hmm. now we have listeners in America half our listeners are in America oh wow and they may (laughs) not be familiar with what a curate is so could you explain in context of the Church of England yeah it's probably worth me noting that I'll probably get a ton of these Church of England definitions wrong as I go (laughs) 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 But, uh, but I'll explain as well as I can so um typically when you go into ordained ministry in the Church of England, you you have a discernment process um, with uh, other people within the Church of England, and the the conversation grows through that discernment period of time. And that can be as short as a few months or as long as a couple of years, like it was for me, just simply discerning whether or not you're going to pursue ministry. Mm. And then you go to 
a theological college. Um, there are various different ones underneath the Church of England banner, um, and they each have different styles. And you're an ordinand at that point, when you're at a theological college, your class is an ordinand, someone preparing for ordained ministry. Mm. And then you finish theological college and you become a curate, which is basically the period of time when uh, you serve as what we call a deacon, first and foremost, you serve, that's what your calling is centered from a place of serving. And then you get ordained as priest along the way and uh, it's, it's kind of like the, the place where you cut your teeth, you know, <laughs> it's yeah. where, you, where you get prepared in the more practical sense for church leadership, mm. um, if you can compartmentalize it like that. Oh, and, yeah. it, and it's different for everyone. You know, there are some curates who will stay at their churches for many years and they're more than qualified to lead a church, but for whatever reason, they've decided to stay there in that position. And then there are others who will be curates for somewhere between one to three years and then move on, you know, to another form of church leadership. So I'm currently in the final throes of my curacy, just a few months left where I'm currently based. So you, you're, um, you've you been a curate for how long? Uh, this is my third year. Third be, year, yeah. right, okay. Yeah. So during that time, um, what has been the most enjoyable um, thing that you you um, like doing? Oh, wow. Uh, it's got to come that one of my favorite times or seasons during the curacy has been uh, when I ran an alpha course, you know, and it's um, because it cuts to what I'm most passionate about, I think, in terms of reaching the lost and discipleship. And, um, you know, seeing people who are searching, you know, either come to faith or come back to faith in some way and then get an opportunity to baptize them at the end of it and see them flourish. I mean, that that for me is always <laughs> that's always going to take the win, Wonderful. I think. Um, so I, I've really, really enjoyed that. Um, I mean, another highlight would be just recently actually it was quite a simple day but in the morning I had somebody I had a zoom conversation with somebody who wanted to hear more about church planting and so they were kind of just a, a few steps where I was maybe three years ago so I was able to talk to you know feet invest in them and then straight after I was talking to a church planter who was investing in me <laughs> and then later on in the evening I was able to disciple somebody on a leadership course I'm facilitating. Mm. I mean, apart from evangelism, that was a great day. There was no evangelism in there, which would have been that the <laughs> icing on the cake. I see on the cake, but you know, being able to invest in others and see them grow in their leadership and purpose that God's called them to is, yeah, is so enriching. Mm. Yeah. So you you mentioned um, church planting and. Mm -hmm. uh, we we met um, we met through a unity group and then uh, reached out on uh, LinkedIn and we've been talking for a few weeks and um, one of the things I discovered ab about you was that you have this podcast called uh, Church Plant Chat. Mm -hmm. um, so what where did that come into your journey as a curate and why has it mm. come up? Uh, that's a good question. Well, I suppose the for church planting and the passion for planting, I suppose that seed was sown looking back, probably when my dad planted a church. Um, and Where's that? Where's so your that's dad's back in church? that's in North London, in um, uh, in on Oakley Road North in in Whetstone near Finchley. It's called Oakley oh, it's Community Church. Me. Yeah, Very oh, it's just me. up the road from you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oakley Palmer's Community Green. Church. Mm -hmm. And um, gosh, when would he have? I probably would have been around. Well, it was twenty years ago this September, so um, I would have been fourteen. Oh, <laughs> uh, I'd have been fourteen, and uh, 
actually I wasn't in a good place with God at the time, but I was funnily enough, part of the planting team. If, um, although I did nothing, you know, <laughs> I, did, <laughs> I, I was kind of there just looking miserable. The son of the planter. <laughs> <laughs> Who just looked miserable all the time. Yeah. I, uh, uh, I was just being a stroppy teenager. Teenager. Yeah. Yeah. And, and not very close to God at the time. So anyway, but that's, I do remember asking myself, gosh, what's dad getting involved in here? You know, because he was a market trader, you know, selling men and women's clothing in Walthamstow and Tottenham and, and Barnet, you know, all areas wow. in North London. And, and then he went quite literally, you know, from that into this. And uh, so in a way, that's where the seed was sown. And so for me, church planting has always been normal, you know, seeing him do that. I think, okay, well, that's just what we do, you know, and he was from a Church of England background. Um, that's the, the, you know, the church that sent him, St. Barnabas in North Finchley, that's Church of England, and, and they got him to go and plant. So in my mind, I went into theological college, grew up and went to theological college, thinking, well, church planting is just the norm. And I soon found out it, it isn't in, in many areas of church. Um but I was hungry you know I was hungry to learn more about it and so mm. I started listening to podcasts at the time and and they were all American and they were great and they are great and I thought I really want to hear from some planters here in the UK and at the time I'm sure you know, it may well have changed by now but at the time I couldn't find any UK based church planting podcasts I mean I suppose it's quite niche isn't it but mm. um and um and I just sat with that for a while, didn't really do anything about it. And then in my curacy now, um, last year, just before the pandemic got going, I thought, uh, be probably because I'm looking to church plant myself, I thought I really, really, really want to hear now <laughs> from mm. other practitioners, you know. Um, and so I just thought, well, I'm just going to start one and, um, and start interviewing various church planters across the UK. Um, yeah, yeah. So the podcast is for you, basically. <laughs> it wasn't. It, it was, yeah. Sorry. No, oh, that was so facetious. No, it, it was. <laughs> to be honest with you, that is exactly who it was for, first and foremost. I just thought I, I'm hungry to learn more about this. And um, and so I started a podcast. And I suppose quite quickly, maybe even after the first episode, I thought, I want to share this with others, you know. And um, and then from that place um i've want i've i've learned i want to try and equip and empower others who are thinking about planting yeah. or encourage people who are in it already yeah you know um and to try and see what the network of planting looks like and and so it's grown from me just want i mean i still do primarily do it do it for myself to learn um but uh but yeah, also just to share it with others to to encourage them, really. So is it a weekly, uh, a seasonal? Uh... Um, well, season one, I kind of I kind of just ran with it and um, just kept on interviewing and just there was no structure. I just recorded, interviewed, recorded, threw it out, recorded, threw it out <laughs> just as I did. And then um, it came to a natural end that season and I didn't really know what to do with it by then because I thought well I've got 24 episodes there's 24 loads... since yeah. when I think I did all those last year um and I thought well there's plenty for me here to learn from and, uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't need to do anymore <laughs> <laughs> I've got my own little course here where I can just sit and listen to and learn um <laughs> and then um I mean, it's all meshed together with other stuff that was going on in our lives during Curacy, really. Uh, we, you know, I, I brought it to a close. There were some disappointments. And then we can unpack this a bit further on, if you like. But, um, you know, a fire was lit again. And, um, and I thought, well, I want to start a second season unpacking some of the themes that came up in the first one, you know, and um, because there were so many different themes. Um, yeah, so, so we're continuing it now with season two, which is a little bit more structured. So at the moment, <laughs> I suppose once a month we're releasing a, an episode. But okay. It's, okay. We don't really have a, a set rhythm, but that's what we're aiming for. And we, we yeah. communicate quite a lot on Instagram as well. Yeah. 
I guess it's less pressure to do it once a month because ours is weekly and I oh you know yeah I'm, I'm it's kind of a in, deadline yeah yeah I'm kind of in awe of you doing it every week I was like wow oh. that's, that's <laughs> incredible <laughs> I, I'm just very driven because you know as you said uh, this is all about equipping okay mm. it might have started with you but actually you're helping other people as well but you mentioned mm. we just now mm. um so apart from yeah. you being a curate, um, <laughs> who else is in your life that is affected by the decisions you make around your yeah. vocation? So uh, married to my wife, Hayley, it's going to be uh, I said, an, uh, our anniversary this month, actually. <gasps> oh! uh, we'll be married nine years together for 10 oh, this congratulations. March. Congratulations. Oh, thank you. Yeah. And uh, we've got two, two kids. We've got oh. Evangeline, who's six. Mm. and uh Zachary who just turned four um, this month so and actually Hayley I mean she's she's been in the you know um within the ministry side of things from day one so we were together when I was a teacher and then uh, we were dating for a few months and um and I said to before we got engaged um, a few weeks before we got engaged, I said to her, look, you know, I think, I think God's calling me into full-time ministry. So <laughs> if, if you're not up for that, <laughs> we should probably go our separate ways. Um, what you said literally. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, wow. Um, and, <laughs> and bless her, probably quite naively, she said, no, I'm, I'm up for that. <laughs> And, um, that's amazing yeah and then, and then not too long after we you know we we got engaged and um oh, and then beautiful and then maybe a year or two into our marriage I started pushing the door for the discernment process that I mentioned earlier yeah um so yeah they we very we're very much in it together as a couple she's not ordained but I mean she leads just as much as I do as much as she can from a curacy position anyway because as a curate you're for want of a better phrase, you're not the one in charge. Um, you know, so I have a boss, the main vicar or training incumbent, um, who's kind of like your mentor through the whole thing. So the buck stops with him. Um, you're like an apprentice, mm. I suppose. Mm. Um, so we lead together as much as we can. Um, mm. and, and I think that's how we'll do it going forwards too. Um, but Wonderful. yeah, that, yeah. <laughs> Wonderful, because, you know, when um, uh, we're, I mean, we were talking and one of the things I I always um, say to anybody who is interested in uh, planting a church is. It's not about you. Um, it's the we rather than the I, um, because if you are married, you. Uh, you have and you know children and whatever you've got to consider it as a holistic so it's yeah. good to hear you guys are working together and that Haley supports you yeah and we're so really... oh, sorry, go on. has you mentioned um some disappointment earlier can you talk mm -hmm. about that yeah yeah um so for this like, uh, like I said earlier every curiosity is different um this particular one was um intended to um be a church planting curacy so at some point during the curacy we were hoping that we would plant a church and uh, we're currently in Milton Keynes and we were aiming for it to be in Milton Keynes uh, and and for various reasons um we we haven't been able to I think we we attempted I think three times um to 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 do that and it and each time it's um it just we just haven't been able to grab hold of the seed even you know to to mm. put it in the ground you mm. know um and that came with a, with a lot of disappointment actually um because i mean i'm quite an all or nothing person so for each one of those i was all in you know mm. so prayer walking the area Mm. dreaming up where we might live in the area what the plant would look like mm. having loads of meetings and drawing up vision and dare I say some sort of strategy for each one mm. and so you know I threw myself into each one and so mm. with each one when each one didn't even 
I don't know, start, <laughs> you know, um, it, it kind of is scrunching up the paper, throwing it in the bin each time that that kind of it has, it takes its toll on you. Um, and that's so when you're emotionally invested each time, you know, um, so that that was quite that's been quite a difficult part of the journey. And I think it's not one that we hear too much about in the church planting arena, or if we do, I've, I'm just ignorant to it. Um, Cause I think a lot of the time, maybe, maybe it's different in free church denominations compared to an institution like the church of England. But I think quite often when we see church plants, people aren't always aware of the amount of, um, I suppose if failure is the right word amount of false starts sometimes you get before you even <laughs> get one get off the ground yeah um, so is it is it common do you think I think it's probably more common than we think mm, yeah um, interesting. and I think for us in um, in dealing with that disappointment I think what I'm learning is uh, it, it I've learned ultimately it's it's been about us just needing to surrender <laughs> each time mm. because I went full circle and thinking, well, God, you know, have you called me to planting? You know, if it's mm. not happening, have you called me to it? Have you even called me to church leadership? Because for me, and I know I'm going to have, I would have loads of people disagree with me on this, but for me, I just see my calling to leadership just enveloped within the realm of planting you know so trying to separate my call into church leadership from planting I really struggle to do yeah and, so when and we... for good reason yeah so, <laughs> I so know when... John, John Maxwell all, um, has said and he's all often quoted not everybody's into John Maxwell but I think mm. what he said was sound when he said things rise and fall on leadership. So if we mm. don't have that structure in the first place, it's it can fall apart. That's been my experience anyway. Mm. Yeah, and so when those disappointments came, I thought, well, am I called to this at all? And so I, that was a moment of surrender, I think, where I kind of said to God, oh, you know what, fine. If, if this isn't what you want, then I'm willing to you know, let it go. And it wasn't long after that, at that moment, where actually conversations started happening again and encouragements started coming my way and, and thinking, no, yeah, that's disappointing, but th this is the calling that we've got. And so we're going to keep on pursuing it. Um, so it's been, been difficult that bit, but actually um, God's been faithful as always. And um, in learning a lesson to, to surrender has been so valuable, I think. I think when when the disappointment happens and we shared about some of my disappointments, um, it's good to have a reflective time and, and mm. step away from it and see it in perspective so you can hear. Because sometimes we talk, we chatter so much, even <laughs> even when we're by ourselves. Sometimes yeah. we have this self-talk thing and it's not always good. Mm. <laughs> and mm. and if we can stop and still be still and know. Yes, mm. be still and know, hear that small voice um, mm. that does speak to us, but sometimes we don't listen. Sometimes I'm in my garden <laughs> and I said to God uh, about something that was happening in our life and and I clearly heard it. I'm speaking to you, but you're not listening. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, sometimes that is where your discernment is. So. You, you talked about that and and what so what's the next stage of your journey do you know um yeah I, I can so my curiosity will come to an end here this summer okay. where I'm currently based um we did there is something in the pipeline um church planting related it's it, it's not confirmed yet so I can't mm. share any more I'm afraid no, no um, problem mm. because it you know it that, that it, gives me yeah. a part too <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah you can you can we can have a podcast in a, a year or so or whatever and you'll see me mm. pulling my hair out while I was trying to plant the church <laughs> or not <laughs> or not yeah but no there, so there's something in the pipeline but um it's not confirmed yet so we're hopeful mm. um and, and we, we're just kind of seeing trying to ride the wave really to see where we if where we end up 
<laughs> I know when we talked, you mentioned a spiritual director, which for mm. most people means a mentor. Mm -hmm. um, how key has that been uh, mm. for you? Uh, it's it's been incredibly instrumental and I, I've had um, different spiritual directors in different seasons of life um, so I can, yeah I can think of three key people um, over the years who have been incredibly influential in my discipleship um, and you know it's because it's not all about um, church ministry and, and stuff is it and um, it's, you know it's about our walk with God and um, they've been without yeah at each step of the way they've all brought something different to the table and and tapped into different things in my life as we've gone through but i can't recommend highly enough the importance and need for for spiritual direction or i don't know there's probably different phrases <laughs> coaches mentors yeah um who are yeah who have who have walked ahead of you mm. uh, uh in their Been discipleship the t-shirt yeah yeah, been incredible. So, for instance, my current spiritual director is Malcolm Gray. He's a co-host on the podcast, and um, he he's got a, a, a huge background in church planting over in Thailand. Thailand, um, okay. Yeah, so and, that uh, that would be a, di a completely different culture. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, he was a, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he, he was a mis he was a missionary there. He and his wife and his daughter Amy were missionaries over there for years church planting and raising up other church planters and now they head up uh WEC UK here in the UK obviously WEC UK and um <laughs> uh, and yeah and he's he's been incredible you know he asks really good questions with regards to the planting journey and leadership and family life mm. you know um and how you know how how, how me and Haley are doing and keeping me accountable and all that sort of stuff and and uh, keeping me in Haley's good books. <laughs> <laughs> That's, it's really interesting, though, because it is an area that I know from experience. I've had 28 years plus experience in ministry, and I have found that that's the one key area. I have seen, if I count it, I've seen five divorces and people that wow. are very, very close who mm. are church leaders lead pastors um you know in that that kind of level and they've lost it because there's mm. been a kind of an imbalance uh between their spiritual life and their home life that's the first yeah. ministry isn't it Your yeah home. <clears throat> yeah and it's it's tragic isn't it it's absolutely mm. it, it's so it, i mean it really breaks my heart when i see that stuff come up um yeah, and uh, yeah, there's, it's just, it's, it's horrible to see it. And it just, mm. I think accountability is just so, it's one of the things I like about the Church of England. I mean, hey, I know there's, I'm sure there's plenty who've made big mistakes in the C of E, but mm. um, it's got structure there for accountability, mm. which mm. I really value and I think is a real strength. Um, and, and, and then, yeah, so I've got, so I've got my spiritual director, I've got um, my prayer quad. Sounds really cheesy. Um, it's, <laughs> it's, three, it's just it's three other guys who I trained with at theological college. Okay. And um, we became good friends, and so we decided it's something that the college encouraged us to do. Um, uh, and so and so we have, and so we we have a, a WhatsApp group. We we meet well pre-covid i mean now we do it over zoom um but three you know we meet up three times a year we'll have um two of those times will be for like a day and we'll go out and catch up with one another and one of those times we'll take a retreat together and it, we basically just hold each other to account encourage one another and build each other up and have a laugh as well <laughs> you know? yeah which is uh, you know it's all about balance isn't it there was mm. this thing now i don't know i better not do i'll let me try anyway <laughs> life <laughs> is like a bowl of minestrone soup if you do not have all the ingredients it is not minestrone soup that was a terrible, terrible <laughs> accent. <laughs> but I understand the analogy. <laughs> Thank God for that. 
<laughs> so, um, yeah. so the the um, podcast Church mm-hmm. Plant Chat. Where yeah. can people hear it? Um, yeah. And when when is the next <clears throat> episode? Tell me all about it. Yeah. So we, I think wh- wherever you listen to your podcast, if you search Church Plants Chat, mm. you, you should be able to to find the the podcast i suppose it's on all the key ones like um apple and podcasts and spotify and okay um uh, so yeah the, the website we use i think tries to send it out as many as possible so it's, if you just search for church plants chat wherever you listen to podcasts you should be able to find it uh next episode is due to be next week actually on the 24th of march mm. um at this point of when we're recording and uh <laughs> and that is called that episode is called thinking about leadership mm. so where in that episode we were talking about various things like has leadership changed or how has it been affected during lockdown mm. how is leadership within church planting maybe different to other forms of church mm. um has leadership become an idol in the church Mm, um, which, I, I will be listening to that very keenly <laughs> um which is something i heard a preacher talk on at a conference i went to earlier this year and it really made me listen um, oh definitely you know because i thought yeah. oh you know and his basic point was we need mm. to get back to the presence of god first yeah. and foremost and i was yeah. like ah oh, i've got very incredibly... strong views about that actually <laughs> very yeah, strong so that, views yeah that was really mm. interesting so we, we talked about that a little bit but mm. yeah that's that's due to come out on the 24th of march episode two of season two season two season two yeah so all all the information about paul uh the podcast and everything else we've spoken about will be in the show notes included mm-hmm. in that but before we finish i would like you to give one piece of advice Ooh. to somebody that's thinking about a church plant what would it be i think i'm trying to think of what's been most helpful to me and i think one of the things that's been most helpful is involving others in the process Mm. um you know i can I can run away with an idea, draw up vision and strategy and and stuff by myself, probably quite easily. Um, And that's not actually a good thing always. (laughs) And I think that's why the lesson of surrender has been such a big one for me. And I'm sure I'll continue to learn. Um, But part of the thing with that is, you know, if if you know you're prone, especially to isolating yourself and running away with your, your ideas, even more so surrounding yourself with people and and allowing them to be involved in the process from discernment to planning to even you know to praying to dreaming up vision and then making yourself available to to what they say back to you yeah (laughs) you know because they're not always going to say things you like Mm. (laughs) accountability doesn't work if you're not willing to listen to the other person (laughs) (laughs) so uh involve involve others and remain available mm. i think to, to their inc- their advice but also the the spirit of god amen amen mm. yeah. paul you're such a delight to talk to uh. and i can't wait for your next next part of your journey and yes we'll make an appointment a year's time to see how you've got on with the next stage oh that'd be great yeah and thank you so much for having me on the podcast it's, oh it's no been lovely. thank you for your time god bless you you too